first of all, so I'll do my best to keep within the time limit. But I know this story well, the story of Beowulf, and I'm going to do my best to portray it as excellently as I can within five minutes. I'm sure many of you probably know the story, and I'm sure I will not be saying it in a limited verse, just prose. And here it goes. So, there was once a great king, and if I speak of the Danes, I believe, <laughs> and uh, he had built a great hall called Hero, and he loved to have all his Danes come and feast there, and all seemed well, but then a hideous monster called Grendel, he approached and he saw the hall and he hated Hera and he hated the king and his people. So at night, after they had celebrated and drunk meat and feasted and told stories, when everyone was asleep, Grendel came in and he would grab one of the things and bolt out of the door with him and devour him. And this happened night after night until so many of the king's people had been devoured and he was just inconsolable. He didn't know what to do because nobody could defeat this monster. He was huge. He was fierce. He was hideous. But then the fame, the word spread of this calamity and Beowulf, a very brave young warrior of the geese, heard of it and he decided that he would go take some of his trusty men with him, sail over to Daneland and take it upon himself to defeat the monster. So he did. He chose some of his truest comrades, they sailed across, and they were met on the shore by men who hailed them and said, Who are you? And they said, We've come from Geatland, we've heard of Grendel, and we've decided we're going to try to destroy him and free your kingdom of this of this pestilence. And they were welcomed in and they were feasted and they came with great honor. And they all he didn't even uh, clad himself in armor, because he said, I will fight the monster just as he is, my, in my skin, him in his skin, and he had his sword ready. And he had all of his things with him, and at night they went to sleep, but they were ready, so they fought. So night came, Grendel came in again, and he was so quick, he snatched up one of Beowulf's comrades, and bolted him down, chomp, 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 chomp. And then Beowulf sprang up, and he grabbed Grendel by the arm, and they wrestled, and Grendel was so strong, and they were smashing meat benches all throughout the hall. But Beowulf would not let go of his grip, and he was so strong that his grip <coughs> began to burst the tendons on Grendel's hideous arm, and Grendel saw that he could not escape. So he tore himself free and left his arm behind, behind in Beowulf's hand and ran out of the hall bleeding. And then the next morning, Beowulf had nailed up the arm on the wall and Grendel had gone off in his misery, slinking away and hiding. And everyone praised Beowulf and they had a great feast in his honor and they said, now the land is rid of this and they, the king gave him rings of gold and said that he swore friendship with him forever and so they fixed it again and all thought everyone was everyone thought all was well but alas it was not for when they went to sleep that night Grendel's mother came she was furious from the injury done to her son she came and she gobbled people one two three snatched them up and then she went off. In the morning there was such woe. And the king was just beside himself. He thought, well, this never ended. Beowulf said, never fear. I will go after this fiend. I will defeat her just like I did her son. And so Beowulf with his comrades went and followed the trail, the bloody trail left by Grendel. They went all the way to a dark, murky mirror. And they 
saw the lair was under water. So Beowulf took with him his sword, and he prepared, and he said, wait here for me, to his comrades. To deep breath, he dove underneath the water. He swam and he swam through the murky depth. Finally, he came underneath into this dim grotto, the cavern that was the lair of Grendel and his mother. And there, he came upon Grendel lying, he bled to death, but his mother was there. And she attacked him, and her grip was so strong that if he wasn't wearing his armor, it would have crushed him. But he, with his sword, hacked at her and hacked, and hacked. Finally, he was able to chop off her head. And then he found there, he looked around after he killed Grendel's mother, and he found a marvelous sword made by giants, made for giants. It was a giant sword. So he took Grendel's mother's head, he took the sword, and he swam back up. Now meanwhile, in their fight, as his comrades were up watching on the surface, they saw the waters boil and churn, and the blood swirl to the surface, and they thought, oh, all's <coughs> over. Surely he's perished. And he came up out of the water, holding the head of Grendel's mother by its hair with this marvelous giant sword. And they were overjoyed, and they brought him back with great triumph to Heorot. And again, so much praise was lavished on him. And friendship was sworn forever between the Danes and the Geats. And Beowulf went home, laden with treasures and, and promises of friendship. And in his time, he became a great king, and he, he ruled long and prosperously. And then one day, in his old age, it happened that there was a dragon's horde. And one day, a servant who had wronged his master and fled, found his way into this dragon's lair where the dragon lay sleeping. And he saw all the treasure saw a beautiful golden cup and decided he might as well at least take something with him. So he took the golden cup and then he fled. And then at this the dragon was aroused and his fury was beyond words that when he saw that he'd been robbed and so he flew out, issued from his den and started making, laying waste to the land of the Geats, burning and killing. <coughs> and Beowulf, though he was an aged warrior now, not as hale as he used to be, he knew that as his duty as a king to protect his people, he had to go and face this dragon. It was the third time he would do a great deed, and he was going to do it. So he put on the toughest armor he had, he took his great giant sword, and some of his trustiest men went with him. They waited until the dragon, after pillaging and burning, had gone back to slumber and rest in his lair. And then they crept close, and Beowulf said, wait here, and he went into the dragon's den, crept up, but the dragon was waiting, and the dragon let forth a blast of flame, and the heat of it almost overcame Beowulf, but he drew his, he had his sword, and he began fighting the dragon, and the din of that, the roaring, the clanging, the burning, was so frightening that many of his companions turned and fled and deserted their king. But one of them stayed behind, at a distance, waiting. Finally, Beowulf emerged, crawled out, pulled off his helm, and he was wounded sorely, burned terribly. And the dragon's poison was already working its way through his veins. But this servant came and he brought some water in his helm and bathed Beowulf, his king. And Beowulf said that he had slain the dragon, but he knew his own end was drawing near. So they bore him back, and he did die, and they held a funeral for him. And the women wailed because now they knew that they had no king to protect them. They were at risk. Their enemies, the Swedes, the Finns, would come and ravish the lands. So Beowulf, these three times, defeated great enemies and won great renown, but the last time took his life. But, though he died, everyone always remembers his name. 
Beowulf, the great warrior, will never be forgotten.